and yeast. And, you know, for me, it's more like, are there no, are there no infectious organisms? Are there a little bit? Are there a moderate amount? Are there a lot? And, and that is a grading system that helps you monitor improvement of the infection. So we look at it under the microscope. We figure out, all right, what are we dealing with? Is it a mixed infection? Is it just yeast? Is it just bacteria? And then we pick our, our medication. And there's a million medications out there, and every veterinarian has ones that they like, and every veterinarian thinks that the ones that they like and the ones that they use are the only ones that should be used. But in reality, it's just what you're comfortable with and what you've seen good results with. And most ear medications are a combination of a steroid, an antibiotic, and an antifungal. And even if there's no, let's say, yeast, you could still use a combination medication because it may have the antibiotic that you want. And the type of steroid is going to depend on how frequently you need to use the medication. So, for instance, some steroids you have to use twice a day, some you have to use once a day. There's some longer-acting gel-based ointments now that you can put in that can last for up to 30 days. Usually, they need to be rechecked. There's two different versions. One, you have to repeat after one week, and that's called a cernia. And the other one, Claro, is supposed to be good for 30 days, but what I find usually is like after two weeks, you, you have to recheck it, and you may need to repeat it. And then that second dose is good for 30 days. And that does not work in every case. Uh, it's... Both of those medications, uh, both of those are actually, they're two different companies, but it's, it's the same ingredients. And they're, they're used more for combination yeast, bacterial infections, but it's specific, specifically, excuse me, specifically cocci, so those little balls. It's, it's not as helpful for rods. And so you've, you've looked at it under the microscope. You've determined the type of infection. You've determined the medication that you want to use. And then the next question is, do we clean the ear? And the answer is usually yes, but it depends on what we're using. So if you're using one of those longer acting medications or you're using a medication called Zymox, which is an enzyme based medication. So there's no antibacterial, no antifungal component. It's just an enzyme plus a steroid. That one you don't want to clean with because the cleaner will inactivate the enzyme. And that one I really like for like mild infections because anytime I don't have to use an antibiotic or an antifungal and I don't have to worry about the risk of, of resistance, I think is great. And I think it's a great product, uh, but it's just not for every case. So in general, if I'm not using a long-term or Zymox, then I will have owners clean. And the cleaner type that I recommend is dependent on the problem. If it is a yeasty, waxy issue, then there is a degreasing cleaner called Cerumine, I think is how you pronounce it, that I really like. It, the problem is, is it's greasy. You know, it's kind of the concept of like, if you want to get sticky off, you use olive oil. You know, if you have something sticky, you're trying to get off a substance. Uh, so if you have really waxy ears, you can use this oily ear medication to clean it. And it does a great job. It's just... You really don't want to wear nice clothes when you do it, and you want to ideally wear gloves because it can get slippery. And if it is like a really nasty infection, then there's a combination product with uh, what's called TRIZDTA, which, which helps interrupt the attachment of the bacteria to the epithelial surface. So it helps prevent that bacteria from adhering initially to the inside lining of the ear. But again, it depends on the type of bacteria that you're looking for. And those cleaners come with or without an antifungal. So the nice thing about the TRIZDTA ones is that for really fairly heavy-duty infections, you clean, and then sometimes you can actually clean and then put it in and leave it in a little bit so it all, almost acts as a medication. Uh, but it, it does a really good job of having like a prolonged effect so it works even after you've cleaned the ear. And for, you know, mild run-of-the-mill infections, if I'm not using Zymox, then I have some kind of gentle ear cleaners that I recommend. There are a million online recipes for homemade ear cleaners that include like apple cider vinegar or sometimes hydrogen peroxide. And some of them work really well. Uh, some of them are really, really drying or irritating to the ear. I don't normally recommend people make their own ear cleaner just because we have so many good products that have actually been proven to work but it doesn't mean it's wrong it's just if it causes irritation then you should stop using it and I personally don't have clients clean more than twice a week it's it's rare that I recommend they clean more than that and it's just in my mind 
it can get too irritating if you clean more frequently. That being said, a lot of veterinarians recommend like daily or every other day cleaning, which is fine. It's just in, in my experience, I don't think that's as helpful. And so when you're cleaning the ear, you basically are filling up that horizontal and vertical canal, rubbing the base of the ear, and you want it to make this like noise. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but that's literally the noise that it makes. And so you rub the base of the ear, you're mixing all that stuff up, and then you step back and you let them shake. And if you're me, you put a whole bunch of ear uh, cleaner in both ears at the same time, rub both, and then take a step back. Because once you do the first one, they're like really hesitant to let you do the second one. So if you put stuff in both at the same time, then you know, you've done it. You just have to clean it out. And a lot of people say like, you know, gently put in the drops or, you know, the ear tips. So like the tips of the like nozzles on the cleaner are not long enough to hurt them as far as even if you shove the whole thing in there. But, but because again, there's that, there's that bend, right? Because it's an L shape. So even if you shove the whole tip of the application part of the ear cleaner in there you'd never hit the eardrum they wouldn't like it but you wouldn't be able to damage the eardrum so normally I say just like invert the bottle put it in a little bit just to the very tip of the applicator portion you can't see give it a good squeeze some people say you know put in certain number of drops I I don't know how to count drops when I can't see the fluid coming out and I mean the ear canal is a cup and as long as the veterinarian has ensured that the eardrum is intact if you put in too much, it's just going to come out. So it's not, it's not going to hurt them. So you pour in a bunch, you rub the base of the ear, you step back, you let them shake. And what they're doing is when they shake, they're bringing all that crap that's in the horizontal canal up to the outer canal. So they're doing half of the work for you. And some people like cotton balls. I don't like cotton balls because I feel like I'm just sticking my fingers in there. I actually like to take a a plain tissue, wrap it around my finger, and then clean it. And you can clean the inside kind of whorls of the external canal. You can clean the pinna, and you can clean the vertical canal pretty well. And you can stick your whole finger in there. Like, again, because of the bend, you're not going to be able to to hurt them. And even animals with shorter canals, like their ears are too small, and no human has, like, pencil fingers. So you're not going to be able to hurt them by kind of really getting in there and cleaning it out. So you get in there, you clean it out, and then if you have medication that you're going to use, you always want to clean, wait a little while, and then medicate. And if they come in and their ears just like on fire, red, inflamed, or like oozy pus, and it's so painful, I may not have you do a cleaner at first. I may have you start with an ear medication, and then once the inflammation is better, then start with the cleaner because if it hurts, like I don't want you to have to mess with it. I want us to decrease the inflammation and then go from there. Some veterinarians in outer ear infections will prescribe oral antibiotics or oral steroids. And in my mind, if it's an external ear infection, so what we call otitis externa, right? So anything ending in itis is inflammation. If it's otitis externa, a oral antibiotic is not needed and an oral steroid is generally not needed because the topical medication should be enough to help treat. That's just my personal opinion. I've seen veterinarians do it. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just I don't necessarily think that it's helpful. And in certain instances, I worry that the oral steroid could actually be anti-helpful. Uh, so it, in my opinion, treating it topically is, is going to be the best. And then the next question is, all right, well, if it's allergies, what do we do? Well, yeast in my mind, like a true yeast ear infection is generally an allergy. And so the question is just, what is it to? If it occurs every time, uh, every season, you know, like every spring, every year, then it's probably something in the world that is blooming that is causing this allergy, in which case we can help treat that animal with antihistamines or other medications during that time of year to prevent those ear infections. If it's nonstop yeast infections, then one of the first things I look for is, you know, what, what are they feeding? And I do think in some instances changing from a, from a diet with grain to a grain free diet can help. It's not an all, you know, it doesn't fix everything. And, and with the whole controversy with grain free, we just need to make sure that legumes are not within the first three ingredients. But, I do find that a lot of animals, when you reduce the grain, it does help. 
you also need to make sure like they're not using like a lot of plugins or candles or um, they're not using scented laundry detergent or fabric softeners and that they have whole house air filters or like HEPA filters in rooms where the animals are in just because the ear is a reflection of the skin. So they can have an allergy that reflects only in ear infections, but it is an allergy to something that they're constantly exposed to. And after we do the treatment, I generally recommend people recheck the ear between one and two weeks, and that's to make sure that it's healed, because a lot of times people will not clean as aggressively as we do, which is fine, you know, like we get in there with with, uh, Q-tips, they're they're cotton tip applicators, which are basically just like really long Q-tips, and we get in there and we clean because we know how to not injure the eardrum, and I don't recommend people use Q-tips at home, but a lot of times, even if they're cleaning, you know, with the kind of like pour, squish, shake method, if they're not getting a lot of debris out, then they figure, all right, I did my 10 to 14 days of ear medication, it must be fixed, but they can't see deep into that ear. And so having your veterinarian check it just to make sure, yeah, it's fully gone is, is a good idea. So that, in a not-so-short nutshell, is outer ear infections. If you have any questions or you want more information about outer ear infections, just let me know. If you guys are interested in like talking about middle inner ear issues, we can also kind of follow that up. But I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. I think that about wraps it up. As always, thank you for listening to this installment of Explaining. I hope you enjoyed your time with me and ideally learned at least one new thing for the day. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, feel free to leave a comment below or email info at independenthillvet.com and put podcast topic or podcast comment in the subject line. Until next time.